Hey everyone and welcome back and I got one for you that I'm starting to think we should probably keep quiet about. And that product we'll be taking a look at today is the Bees Combat Systems Predator Ghillie Spectrophage. And we'll do some tests today to find out if this hide really can make you disappear. All right though, let's get to it. So I'm betting that a lot of you are wondering like why we keep testing out and evaluating these thermal hides, particularly when our channel has more of a civilian perspective. And I'll tell you, if you can disappear from the three main visual spectrums, I don't care who your adversary is, you're going to cause them significant, significant problems. But I should probably explain again what I mean when I say the three visual spectrums. The first is visual, as in what you can see with your eye. And then we have what you can see with infrared illuminated night vision. And then the visual signature detected under thermal optics. And by testing these hides out, we're really looking for the best of the best, where you'd be hidden from all three spectrums. One more reminder also, the hide is for active recon and engagement, as the hide allows you to see through it or drape it over an optic and still see clearly. I'll again repeat that a poncho is likely better if you're performing survival and evasion, as it still masks your heat signature while also giving you protection from the elements. The hide instead allows you to easily engage an adversary while still remaining completely invisible, even to a predator. And I'm pretty sure it's on the label. Yeah, see right here, makes the user invisible to predator hunters. And I joke, but it is pretty crazy what this thing can do. And I think by showing this to you, you'll see how useful this would be against a near peer adversary. Like if just a few randoms in every town had this capability, it would be traumatic to anyone idiotic enough to invade. And then maybe some big countries won't be so enticed to do stupid stuff to little countries with a whole lot of gusto. Hopefully we got some wizard nation folks watching in Ukraine. Kick some ass guys. I don't know, maybe we can send them a few of these hides and then just watch the fun. Well, we talked a little bit about who B's combat system is in our B's IO belt loadout, but let's revisit that and talk about who B's is one more time. B's combat systems focuses on the mantra of tactical being a mindset and not an equipment list. And this is shown through their use of laser cut products that maximize functionality while also remove all excess bits. And in that belt loadout video, I was pretty impressed by their gear and all their different pouches, but I was equally impressed by the sheer number of Instagram gear companies that are mimicking exactly what they do. Even if Bees' marketing department is trapped in time somewhere between 1993 and 1997. But I'll stop telling you why I'm so excited about this hide and instead I'll just show you. So today we'll test the Bees thermal hide by seeing how it performs in the visual spectrum, then IR illuminated night vision, and then we'll finish up with how it does under thermal optics. Oh, before we get too far, I wanna say thanks to Pulsar again for supplying us with all the thermal testing equipment required to test all these thermal mitigating hides we've seen on the channel so far. And we'll definitely review that Pulsar XG35 and some other clip-on optics that they sent us too once we've finished with all this testing. All right though, let's take a look at this thermal hide up close and see what it's all about. By first looking at the thermal hide, we see this awesome Atex IX colorway that uses a great mix of dark and bright colors to defeat the visual spectrum. I was actually suggested this color pattern and I've just fallen in love with it with just those deep natural colors that just blend into everything so well. Looking at the material on the hide, it's a lot like burlap. I mean, almost. It's thick, rugged, and definitely has some weight to it. The hide itself has these small holes to allow the user to see through or drape it over a scope and still see clearly, like we mentioned previously. Yeah, uh, that's not potentially scary at all, YouTube. You, almost completely invisible with a high-end rifle. It's just butterflies and kisses stuff. Moving on, now we get to the really interesting part, which is the active camo scrim that is interwoven and connected into the hide. There are several long segments going up and down lengthways, and then several shorter segments going side to side horizontally. There are also a ton of these small leafy bits that are also intertwined and connected in. One small note is there, there are also some extra areas with attachment points to tie down or stake the hide into position. 
And being able to attach the high down is pretty huge because securing it was actually a problem that I ran into previously. And I will say those little scrim bits, I bet you they're gonna be really useful for breaking up the silhouette of the entire hide itself. But the one thing I thought was the most interesting, you get to assemble it. You put together each piece one by one like sewing your own ghillie suit together. By assembling it yourself, you could make some areas stand out more or less and design it around what you want. So in the end, no two hides are really the same and you become intimately familiar with the material and how it all works together. It's really cool as it's like a big grown up version of Legos and as you see it come together just piece by piece. And as you work, you see that it slowly turns into this fully leafy masterpiece that has its own life and structure to it. And I'm gonna spare you me assembling it, but damn is it neat to watch it all come together. But tell you what, Let's go and start testing it. We'll do like what we did on the RELV and I'll watch alongside of you and comment as we watch and we'll kind of see how it does together. First, I'll throw in all my gear and we're gonna load out in a full ATEX IX setup and we'll go to the end of the road and repeat the same test we did the first time. All right, let's get started. <laughs> Is that a bunny? <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's get started. I got a little bit closer this time, so then you can actually see me in the visual spectrum. Um, so yeah, in the top you have the heat, bottom you have visual. <laughs> I think I just saw that bunny run by on the top screen again. Here though, I'll go ahead and set up the hide. I wanna do something similar to what we did last time, where I kinda did it on that right side and then try to set up another little hide on the left side. Now you notice it's actually a lot cooler of a day. So see on thermal how much easier it is to see me this time, even with the hot road, like I really stand out. So. I'm really interested how this goes, <laughs> just me waving. Um, but look, on visual, being this much closer, you can still see me pretty easily also. Thermal, I'm just shining straight through. So what I did here is I got the actual hide out and then I draped it over the tree here. Again, don't try to do this. You're definitely gonna wanna use the paracord and I, I did use it later to make this easier. But you can see here, once I had it all set up, visually, um, you completely disappear. And I think in just a moment, I get the last little piece set up at the top and I have a seat. Yeah, okay, look at that thermally. Um, visual, you've disappeared and thermal, um, you're completely gone. That's that's pretty crazy. Um, I'm liking what we're seeing so far. And here, when I take it off, like you see the wild difference between, you know, not having the hide on and then having it on. And then visually, you know, there's actually a pretty huge difference there too, because you can actually see me pretty easily. That Atex IX is doing pretty well in that environment. I'm, I'm kind of surprised by it. So here I actually tied up the actual paracord to the tree. This makes it a lot easier to actually hang the hide and probably one of the main reasons I really like this hide over anything else because you can actually set it up a lot easier. So I set it up where I can actually get behind it and then and then sit behind it. One, one thing I did discover is it wasn't actually wide enough like the tree I connected it to. So I have to kind of move some pieces around. So you guys are just gonna have to envision that it's all set up correctly. So I move this tree over and then you can kind of see, well, let's see if I can just fast forward some of this to where I actually get it all situated. Just quit messing with it. All right, let me get this tree branch over. Okay, there we go. We get a good enough idea. So what it's doing really well is it's breaking up my silhouette. Visually, I'm completely gone. And then thermal, you can't tell what that is. But then we start to look at the difference but then when we move the actual hide out of the way, like if you see, like if I'm not behind the hide, look at this wild difference, both visually and in thermal. That's pretty amazing so far. Now the day I recorded this was a lot cooler than it was previously. So it was a lot easier to see me on heat signature and really shows how well the bee's hide is doing. But for consistency, let's still move over to the other side of the road and do the same test we did previously with like that fence and trees. All right, so let's try to recreate the same test from earlier. Again, we have our thermal on the top and a visual on the bottom. I managed to get the cameras in the right position this time. So I'm gonna set up the hide here, kind of like what we did in our previous test, just to so show it goes in thermal and visual. I kind of sped it up here so you don't have to sit through me just setting it all up. Get that last little piece over there. And then I'm gonna go around and kind of get behind. You can kind of see the difference visually and thermally. Uh, let's see if I can speed some of this up too of me just getting behind the hide. But you can actually see me, what's interesting, you can see me on the top camera um, and not so much on the left panel with the thermal. There you see me going the wrong way, <laughs> getting lost in the trees and the bushes. Okay, seems like I found my way where I need to be. So here we're already seeing, look at the top, there's thermal. See how easy it is to see me? You can see me waving at the camera there. Uh, go underneath 
that silhouette gets completely broken up. And that Atex IX pattern also in the visual spectrum is just blending in really well. The whole hide has this mass to it with those leafy bits. <laughs> Look, there's my head right there. And he just goes back under. I think I'm even hiding, waving my hands too, and you can't even see it. But look, those 3D bits of the hide actually really kind of make it all blend in. Like it has some weird shape to it. I'm really just surprised how well this is doing. Again, I'm going to step up and, and come back into frame. And you can see my body so easily on thermal. Um, but then when you go underneath, you just come completely disappear. Same with visually, you can't make out that there's a shape behind there, nor is there anything really happening there that makes it interesting to the eye. It just looks like a lot of nothing. All right. And then I come back out and you can see me kind of walk back out in position. I just want you to see, you know, the difference between being behind the hide and then like that normal thermal signature. It's pretty wild. I'll just fast forward this, come back around again. Um, and then I want to show you one more time just removing the hide so you see what it looks like under, you know, with it removed under thermal. It actually has a lot more shape to it even under thermal. Like it doesn't just look like a big block of just black. Now, I just thought it was wild how easily you could see me this time, but then you just totally disappear when you drop beneath the hide. Super impressed. All right, but let's see if the bee's hide can keep this up and let's keep this testing moving, and we'll go back out at night and see how it does under IR illuminated night vision. Okay, I think this is a holy hell moment because look at how ridiculous this looks under IR. I'm gonna keep getting a little bit closer, um, but just look at it initially. That blends in extremely well. And as you get even closer, look, it looks even more and more just like regular leafy bits that look like nothing. We're not seeing that weird, just like sheet that we were seeing with some other tests. This really blends in and just hides to the eye. Look, look at it super duper up close. Um, even then, it just looks like a weird mass. Like you can't really tell what it is. It's not looking like, oh, you threw a sheet over this barricade here. <laughs> look at this from a distance. If you kind of scan around, it just blends right in. Like, I'm going to be surprised if you can even see that at all. Uh, really, really impressive. And here I actually hit it in that original position where we were doing the, you know, the daytime testing. I don't know if you can see it because it's right there. That's how well this is blending in. Um, coming a little bit closer, you could see just how well this does under IR. Uh, we may have a contender that can actually do all three spectrums. I, I did turn on the IR illuminator, but I just happen to have one of the road reflectors uh, the hide was actually in front of, so that's what's bouncing through there. So not the best test. We'll do more in my yard. I think I was most impressed that like the pattern and the 3D structure just gave the whole hide this look of, well, I don't know, nothing. Now, it seemed like we got a lot better results so far because it was a cooler day, but let's continue to keep things consistent and go test it out in my yard again. We're gonna be a lot closer, so we may get way different results. And again, I'll do just like we did on the Relve where I'll hide behind it and then I'll drape it over me. Now, as a reminder, it's not meant to be worn. There's meant to be a space between you and the hide to hide some of that temperature. But here we can show how it works in a worst case scenario. All right, so here's what I look like just regularly. I just wanted you to see the difference in just wearing regular camo and what it does or doesn't do for you. Uh, apologies, the bottom screen is blurry for some stupid reason, so you just have to work your way through it. But here we are with the hide. We're gonna go ahead and set this up over these, <laughs> probably the most famous weeds anybody has. Um, so setting this up again, I'll speed it up. Don't need to see that. And then I'll go behind it. First thing I wanna do is show you what it looks like if you just get behind the hide. And again, just what you look like normally. Uh, visually and thermal, you you do a really good job of disappearing, particularly on thermal. There's no real heat coming through at all. You're not seeing any sort of silhouette. As I start to move, I mean, look at the difference in that. That's, that's just wild. Um, once you go underneath, your silhouette gets completely blocked and broken up. I can't tell that there's anything there. The visually, it looks a little bit weird because it's probably draped on some weeds, but that's about it. So coming back out of there, you see the difference again between the hide and just regular thermal. Now what we're going to do is we'll actually try this out just wearing it. Um, again, though, I'll just show you real quick what it looks like just me. 
and then we'll throw the height on. As a reminder, it's not designed to be like this. You're supposed to have a space between your body and it. It could heat up, but let's do a worst case scenario and kind of see how it does. Um, initially, uh, thermal, it's doing very well. If I can just get all my body covered, I think I just have a little bit of issues getting myself completely covered up, but look how well that's doing. Um, visually is pretty great. Uh, thermal, it looks like it's warming up a bit. Again, it's not designed to do this. I do want to try one thing. What if I kind of put the hide over some of the trees? So it's kind of over me and, and over the actual foliage here. So there's a little more room for the heat to escape. And I think what's starting to happen here, if you watch it closely, some of that heat signature is actually going to be going down. You see, you can just barely see how it's how it's darkening, that those light spots are going away. So this is a good option too. And you, you thermally, you really start to disappear. Um, really pretty impressed by that. Not necessarily what it's designed to do though. Um, standing up, it, it does a lot better than the other one. I'll say that. It's... Um, Visually, I don't know how viable that is. Thermally, that's pretty viable. I, I'm pretty surprised, particularly if I kind of crouch down. Um, that's that's a little bit scary how well that works. Again, not designed for that. We're just kind of looking at it. Not designed to be worn on the body. But in a worst case scenario, you had to move from one position to the next. I would say this would be at least partially functional. You do see it heating up a little bit as I'm wearing it, and that's kind of to be expected, but look at the difference between wearing it and not wearing it. Uh, yeah, it's just a wild, completely wild difference. And then when I kind of crouch down, I think I got that one, looks like I got a little elbow sticking out. Maybe I'll sort out later that I got that. But uh, the trick is to get, you, oh, there we go. The trick is to get your whole body covered up. That's probably going to be the biggest challenge because the hide itself does work well. Um, really, really well. I like how it looks so good under visual also. Um, that three, those 3D leafy bits just really break up the overall shape. Yeah, <laughs> just look at the difference though. That's pretty baffling and I'm sold so far on this test. So let's see what else we got and keep moving. If I can get this thing off me. Even at that super short distance, the entire heat signature just completely disappears. And what's crazy is I can still see out of it extremely well. It's just nuts. All right, let's keep going and let's test it under IR illuminated night vision right up close and see how it does. All right, so again, here we are at night, super close. Look at how well the pattern does. I have the IR illuminator on so you can just see how well it's doing under illuminated night vision. It just blends in. It's not important. It just looks like a mess of nothing. Here we are from a distance. Uh, you can't make out anything going on back there. It looks like nothing. It's not shining like a sheet. It's blending in super well. Here I turn on the actual D-Ball D2 uh, diffuser illuminator, so it's kind of diffusing the whole area. Here you can see the hide is a bit of a different reflective pattern, so the contrast kind of makes it show up, but it's not actually reflecting IR, so make sure you're paying attention to what exactly is happening here. Getting close, you can see it a little bit better. Did this kind of the same thing. See how it doesn't really make the hide glow or anything? Um, it really just has a nice camo pattern to it. It blends in really well. I think I'm most surprised on how well turning this illuminator on and off, how well it does under IR, particularly with our other um, hides we've seen that have kind of had a challenge here. Um, putting it on the focus illuminator mode, <laughs> it really <laughs> just kind of burns everything out. It's just so bright. It starts to auto gate the PVS 14s anyway, kind of what you're seeing here. It just makes a mess of things. But you can tell um, the hide itself isn't having any more challenge. The challenge is in the contrast between how the plants and it reflect. So that's something you run into with your gear anyway. But we get a little bit closer here and you can see it's not causing any issues. It really just looks like plants. See how those leafy bits kind of come through? It's pretty amazing that the entire camo pattern is still visible under night vision. Now, the darks of the pattern could be an issue in some environments, but you could just pick a different camo pattern to fix that. But tell you what, during all this testing, I'm all geared out and I have everything. What would happen if there was like an emergency and you just had on regular schmegular civilian clothes and you had to just go and use it right now? 
So in order to find out, I got my friends to help me again, and we tried to recreate the exact same test that we did previously. So let's see how the high does in the daylight first, with all our surroundings all nice and warm. Okay, so here we are in the daytime, out on the deck again. We have a visual on the right and thermal on the left. We have our uh, friend Oz waving. You can't see him under thermal or really visually, except when he puts his arm up, obviously. But look at the difference between the two. You, you can't really see that, but we've seen a lot of success in the daytime. So, you know, I'm not that impressed with it. I like how it looks under visual. So here we're gonna test daytime. Again, we're gonna use it in the woods like we did on the previous test. Um, I will say visually, it's starting to look pretty good. Thermal, I think we're gonna run into an issue where I think the actual hide is a good bit warmer than the woods, like we had it sitting out for a while. So the hide's gonna, it's gonna glow a little bit because it's technically warmer and then has a warmer person underneath it. But still, look at it visually. Um, it's just like this weird lumpy shape of nothing. Uh, thermally, that's an individual wearing it. And that's not designed to do that and it's doing it extremely well. Um, the outline of the hide kind of sticks out, but there's no actual like profile underneath of the person. Again, I think that hide's actually warm for us, us having it in the sun, but look at the difference from when you remove it. Now from both the visual and the thermal spectrum, the user is pretty hard to see from just about 20 yards away. But let's test what happens when the sun goes down and it gets a lot cooler out. Let's see if the bees hide can keep up the thermal mitigation needed to hide the user. And I think here's the real test. So here we are really up close at night again. So you know, individual is the warmest thing here. And just look how those bits break up that silhouette. See what it looks like leafy parts there? That's really pretty crazy because as we pan around, you can't really tell where, well, he's obviously right there, but as we pan around, you can't really tell that. Going back a little bit, now we're at about 20 yards. Look how much, even at 20 yards, that profile and silhouette is just broken up. It's so easy to see him normally, but then behind the hide, you can't see him at all. So then we have our individual um, back out in the woods here at night and wearing the hide again. Look at how those bits are doing something very different than what we saw before, where it's really breaking up the actual silhouette. You can tell something is there. Like it's, it's, I don't, I can't tell what it is. And now look at the, the arm sticking out. It's very obvious now, but it's so interesting as it looks way more nondescript. It's like, I can't tell what that is at all. But then as you see the individual underneath, it's, it's just crazy how much of a difference it's actually making and then breaking up the silhouette. Like, look at that. Look how much it really blends in just as I pan around. Like, you know it's there, but would you know if you weren't looking? I, I don't think you would. Let's try something a little bit different. Let's have her actually crouch down. And this is where things start to get pretty interesting. Uh, look, it's right there. That's that's crazy um, how much a difference it is. And, and I, don't, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what this is. Why, why did this video make it into the final cut? <laughs> All right, and here we go. We have the actual hide draped over our bench like we did before. And the previous test didn't do so well with this because you could see the individual so easily. Now, look what's happening here. You can still kind of see the silhouette. It's blending in pretty well. But look, that foliage pattern is breaking up the actual silhouette. So you can't tell it's a person you can't tell that's anything really besides maybe a rock. When they start to move and transition, you start to see, I mean, look at, look at the wild difference in the heat signature. That's just crazy. So the B spectral flash is just nuts as it breaks up the silhouette so much that you can't even tell if it's a person. And I think that's what makes it do so well in both day and night for thermal mitigation. The scrim pattern on the spectral flash breaks up your silhouette so much, you just can't tell what it is. But tell you what, let's do one more test and let's see one more time how it does under IR illuminated night vision. All right, here we are at night again on the deck. Again, we're seeing the same thing we see over and over again. This really, really good IR performance where the whole high just looks like a mess of nothing. It just blends in with everything. It's indescript, it doesn't catch the eye. Uh, going back out to the woods, we're going to test this one more time at night, putting on the actual hide. Now, 
Here you can see the high, the way it reflects IR and acts under night vision is a little bit darker of a pattern. Now, I actually prefer that because I think if we actually went deeper into the woods, you could basically be invisible. But here we're going to see some of the contrast. But look at how you can see the IR. So, um, look at that, though. You, If you didn't know someone was there, you would have no idea how it has the light and the dark spots still shining through. That's pretty crazy. And if you went back just a little bit further, man, under night vision, you'd be completely <laughs> invisible. So we're really seeing all three spectrums here, which is a little bit wild. Um, I just love how you can still see the camo pattern even through night vision and doesn't look like a ghost in a bed sheet. Well, this thing, well, it kind of frightens me if you want me to be honest. And I think it would be fun to play with all the different camo patterns and see which one does like absolutely perfect for IR night vision use. I will say with the leafy form, with the Fantastics Atex IX camo, you just disappear from the eyes. Then that same shape and pattern shine through in IR illuminated night vision to make you just unimportant to the eyes to hide your position. Well, then the heat side of the spectrophage just totally breaks up your silhouette to make you blend in right to your environment. And this is one of those rare instances when you have something that's just jaw dropping. You really just disappear. But then you as the user can still engage, recon, and acquire targets. Yeah, it's just a little bit baffling. So let's do some pros and cons. And again, I'll break it up into each of the visual spectrums. So the first pro we'll do is on the actual visual side of things. And that's that 3D leafy pattern. Being able to assemble the hide and create it into your own ghillie design was way more fun than I thought. And after I was done, the 3D form of the entire hide worked to break up the shape of my position to make it look uninteresting. So I never really looked like a guy with just a sheet draped over him. All right though, so for my next pro is gonna be that Atex IX pattern and the other B's colorways that they offer. The Atex IX by itself did amazing in my application and environment. And I've moved a ton of my own personal gear into the Atex IX pattern. I was just amazed at how well it worked to hide the user. But even if you don't love the Atex IX, or it's a particular look under night vision, Bees has a ton of different color options available on the site. And that Atex FG is pretty ridiculous too. So for the last pro I want to mention in the visual spectrum is the weight of the hide and its durability. The added weight of the spectrophage gives the hide its own life and makes it look like it has a mass to it. This just further adds to the ability to hide the user. The hide's thicker material is also insanely durable, and you don't have to worry about tears or rips in the material. And all good things should have a con, right? Well, it does have one. I wish those scrim pieces just had a better way to secure into position. I've had to go back and retie a few spots that came loose after use and testing. I just tied them a bit better, and they seem to stay in place after that. It's overall a non-issue though. Another con I found is that due to the added weight, it can be a bit difficult to drape over foliage and get set up right. So just make sure to use some 550 cord and use those little hooks and loops inside the material itself to just hook it into and then hook it to the foliage. It's, it's a ton easier. And then once it was actually in place, the added weight kept it from flowing like a sheet in the wind. So overall, it was a, I guess, a pro. <laughs> so let's move over to the IR illuminated night vision side of things, that whole night vision spectrum. And the first big pro is that actual camo pattern and the ability to see it at night. The first thing you see under IR with the bees is that same Atex IX pattern just shining through. The whole hide retains the same camouflage capability and keeps the user hidden in their position. Without looking like you're just going trick-or-treating or like there's a sheet just draped over some trees. I, uh, I don't have a whole lot of cons here, though. You may want a different colorway that does better in different environments under IR. I don't know. That's really up to you. Um, all right, moving to thermal, the big pro, it does absolutely amazing in thermal mitigation. With the added layers of scrim and bits, it's not really the user that disappears, but their silhouette, as the edges are not clearly defined as the small leafy bits and other whatnots just break it all up. And the designer is really blowing me away with their understanding of some really complicated things in both the visual and the thermal spectrum. The added scrim bits not only add to break up your overall outer shape under standard vision, 
but then also break up the inner silhouette under thermal. It's just really, really smart, and overall, the whole thing is pretty wild. I'm just most impressed with the bee's hide in how well it actually hides the user when you try to look for. And the hide is like nothing I've ever seen before, where it works to keep you hidden insanely well from both visual, IR, night vision, and then even blends you in, even if you're using higher end thermal cameras. And something like this would make you, well, <laughs> more than a little bit scary. But I hope this review on the Bee's Thermal Hide was helpful in your purchasing decisions. I wanna say thanks to all of our Patreon supporters and all of our YouTube members. You're the ones that make it possible that we get to see all this cool stuff and have night vision, and I get to test it all out for you. It's just amazing. And I wanna say thanks to everyone that likes, comments, and subscribes. Comment down below what you think about that Bee's Hide and that awesome scrim. All right, everyone, full shout. Listen, you're still here, which means you want some afterthoughts. Putting that thing together is insanely fun. Trust me. All right, go buy one. <laughs> I got bugs everywhere. <laughs>